Welcome back to another board game review here on the channel. Today we are going to be meshing our different worlds and that is anime and board games and they are going to smash together as we discuss Full Metal Alchemist, the board game, Brotherhood, The Promised Day. <laughs> you made that as awkward as possible. Yes. That's okay. Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood, The Board Game, The Promised Day, based on how it's written on the box. <laughs> but yes, we are going to be talking about this game. We're going to explain how to play it, and then we're going to come back and give you our final thoughts. Full Metal Alchemist, The Promised Day Board Game, is a cooperative game for one to four players ages 13 and up. It should take about 45 minutes to play. The game takes place in Central City, where you're battling in the climax of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Each player is responsible for one of the characters and runs around Central City to stop Father's ambitions. You're supposed to defeat the Creeping Mannequin Soldiers and Dreadful Homunculi and complete the Reverse Transmutation Circle. Here we have the game set up for three players. We have laid out the several components that are required to play based on the number of players. We have set out the homunculus cards, the character life markers, the character cards, the boss tiles, the transmutation circle tiles, transmutation bonus cards, mannequin soldier cards, round board, and the various tokens that go onto the board like the boss tokens, mannequin tokens, and character stands. We have also presented the starting player with the starting player marker. When setting up the game, there are a few things that can change based on the number of players. The first being during a solo game, you will choose two characters to play. You will be playing both of them. Another thing that will change is when you are playing with one or two players, you will be able to flip over one of the two transmutation circle tiles that have two copies within the game. Probably the most major thing that will change based on the number of players is the number of mannequins that you will be revealing and placing in the beginning of the game. Also during setup, but not having to do with the number of players that are playing, you are able to decide on your difficulty between novice, hard, and ultimate, and this will be indicated by the number of bosses you choose to start with. In terms of the end game conditions, there are four ways to lose and only one way to win. Your one victory condition is all five transmutation circle tiles have been flipped face down. The four defeat conditions are, one, there are seven mannequin soldier tokens on the damage track, Two, any of the character's life reaches zero. Three, there are no mannequin soldier tokens left in the stock. Or four, the victory condition is not met at the end of the seventh round. The game is played over seven rounds, each round consisting of a homunculus turn and a player turn. The only exception to this is the first turn where there is no homunculus turn. On every round except for the first, your homunculus turn will be as follows. One, activate boss ability. The abilities of each boss on the Central City board are activated in ascending order of the area numbers. 2. Reveal Homunculus card. Reveal the event card or boss card above the space for the current round on the round board. You will then resolve the effects listed. 3. March. The dedicated space for marching will be indicated on the Homunculus card. You will be moving the mannequins from the innermost to the outermost spaces, starting with the outermost mannequins. If you are moving mannequins in an area that already has mannequins or boss tiles, you will skip over those spaces. If mannequins manage to get off of the board, you will then place them onto the tracker. This tracker is known as the damage track. The fourth step of the homunculus turn is the appearance of mannequin soldiers. The number of mannequins that will need to be placed is indicated on the homunculus card. You will need to reveal cards from the mannequin soldier's deck until you meet or exceed the number that is indicated on the homunculus card. Be careful because rounds 4 through 7 require you to add 2 to the number that is on the homunculus card. The last stage of the homunculus turn is 5 damage check. Characters in the same space as boss or mannequin soldier tokens take one damage, even if there are multiple boss or mannequin soldier tokens in the same space. You move the character life marker above your character summary one space to the right to reduce life. Now we move to the player turn. 1. Basic movement. You can move your character up to the number of spaces found on your character summary. 2. Action. You are allowed to perform actions listed on your character summary. The number of actions you are allowed to use per character is indicated by the number of players. Actions that you're allowed to take on your turn can consist of 
attack. Play a card from your hand into the transmutation circle space of the area that your character is in. Damage and range of the attack will be indicated on the card. Replenish. Draw a card from your deck and add it to your hand. Players who have run out of cards in their decks can no longer perform this action. Move. Like basic movement, you can move your character up to the distance specified on your character summary. Alchemy. This can only be performed by Ed, Al, Mustang, and Scar. This action is only possible if you have two cards in your hand with paired icons. From your hand, place the two cards with matching icons onto the transmutation circle space in the area where your character is located. This will allow you to perform an extra strong attack that is indicated in your character summary. The reverse transmutation circle. This is also only able to be performed by Ed, Al, Mustang, and Scar. When the conditions for your particular transmutation circle section have been met, you are able to perform a reverse transmutation, flipping the section of the transmutation circle to the blue side facing up and immediately getting to choose one of the transmutation bonus cards from the round board and immediately resolving its effects. Companion, Hawkeye and Greed only. With this action, you can use one of the transmutation bonus cards next to your character summary. The used bonus card is then discarded. Once a player has completed their turn, play moves to the next player in clockwise order. Once all players have completed their turn, the next round will commence with the homunculus turn. Given that reverse transmutation is so important, let's go over the different types of transmutation circles that you will have to perform reverse transmutations on. The first, of which there is only one, you need to have at least seven cards in the transmutation circle space in order to perform reverse transmutation. The second, of which there is only one, there are at least four cards of four different colors in the transmutation circle space. The third type, of which there is only one, there are at least four cards of the same color in the transmutation circle space. And the fourth type, of which there are two, there are at least three cards of one color and at least two cards of a different color in the transmutation circle space. If you are playing with one or two players, one of these will be flipped at the beginning of the game, so you do not have to complete this on two. Play continues like this, until either the victory condition is met, at which time the game ends immediately, or one of the defeat conditions is met. Now that you know how to play the game, we will meet you back up top and give you our final thoughts. Now that you know how to play the game, we are going to give you our final thoughts on the game. What are your thoughts on the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Promise Day game? I think it's a good cooperative game. I feel like sometimes cooperative games, you're supposed to be working together, but you wind up not working together so much. And you want to murder each other. This game, I feel like that doesn't happen as much. And it's actually a challenging cooperative game. I think it's more challenging if you don't really know what you're doing yet. I think as you continue to play, you realize which combinations of characters work better together. Usually it's someone with more movement and someone with lower movement. An alchemist and a companion. We just let you guys cheat. We gave you the cheat skills. Yep. I think the alchemist companion combo is the best combo that you can do. You want to make sure that you have that because the companions give you a lot of flexibility and the ability to use the cards, especially the cards that come along with not greed. The other one, which I'll look at Hawkeye. Yeah. Uh, So her, I feel like her cards are a little bit better because greed's cards are the, you can do two damage to a boss or one damage to two bosses and the being able to move anywhere on the board which is nice but the ability to heal someone for two and draw two cards is really good and you just have to remember you can't win the game with only companions you have to have an alchemist in there to do the magics yes you need to be able to reverse transmutate so you need to have an alchemist even though this game is challenging i think that like as i was saying before you kind of figure it out as you go along and one thing i will say is that the bosses are not balanced. And we realized this after our first time playing this game. And for example, one of the bosses is Wrath and he pings you and he's like, hey, hey, you're in that outer ring. You're taking one point of damage. And as soon as you know that's his effect, you can basically ignore him because as long as you're just not in that ring, you good. Yeah, every once in a while you end up having to go into that ring to do damage just because you ran out of actions and it's the only way you can do it but it's it's rare that you're kind of stuck in that scenario and then you have bosses like sloth who moves up some of the mannequins each turn it's like well you're you're probably going to take damage if you get in the way because he causes a little bit of a stampede despite his name yeah so you know 
hey, I might actually need to murder him. So and if you get a com- if you get a combination of something like envy and sloth, which envy puts two mannequins into the third ring or the third section, and then is also they're also moved and interacted with by sloth, that can be an annoying combination. But there's definitely some interesting play on whether or not you're going to spend your time dealing with the bosses or you're going to just be going after the mannequins and going to the performing the alchemy that you can do in the different sections to progress the game and win yeah i'll say that i think the game has very strong components i think they're well put together i think the price point which is about 45 to 55 dollars at this point is a fair price for this game and for what you're getting and i like that it's thematic it really stuck to uh full metal alchemist you know brotherhood and i feel like this is what you would expect to get of a game set in this universe yeah if you're a big fan of the series and you are kind of all educated on what happens and how it ends it's interesting to kind of play through that scenario and they put you into a specific scenario that is from the show which is kind of cool i like that yeah components wise you kind of covered it they're good components the artwork is nice the mechanics are fun enough where there's enough replayability there's a difficulty scaling, which is kind of nice where it actually can become difficult if you're adding in the multiple bosses or if you're doing certain combinations of certain characters, they might not mesh as well together. But I like that having difficulty scaling. Yes, and I think the game is definitely much harder in the beginning when you don't really know what to expect. I think in the beginning, setup's a little rough. The rules can be a little rough to get to the first time around. But after that, things sort of ease. And the only thing I would say that I wish they added because... We're not good at keeping track. Is just some sort of marker to keep track of how many actions you've taken. Because there's so many times where we look at each other and we're like, wait, how many actions did you take? How many moves do I have yeah, left? Yeah, it would be nice to have a little tracker or something that you could progress or even tokens that you could just flip over as you do actions, okay. which a lot of other games do have. Not every game that has actions, but a lot of other games do have that. And it's funny because we never use them. But yeah. now that we don't have them, we want them. Well, it's having four actions plus a free action in a turn if you're playing with like two players. Uh, two and three players. Uh, one player and two players are four actions, which is a decent amount of actions plus your free action to have in a turn to keep track of. Yeah. So that's really the only complaint I have. Just like some of the bosses... It's like, I don't even know why you're here. And just that one little component, just wanting that. Absolutely. I have really nothing bad to say. Yeah. It's weird. I don't really have anything bad to say either. It's weird for me to not have bad things to say. I definitely think you should check out this game. We'll put any of the links that we have for the game in the description. If you do pick up a copy off of any of the links that we put down there, it's no extra cost to you and it really does help out the channel and we really do appreciate it. Like the video if you do like it. Leave a comment down below. Have you ever checked this out? Have you wanted to check this out because you're a big fan of the anime? Have you seen the anime? Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to hear that. Also, did you see the original anime and then not watch Brotherhood or vice versa? Because there was two versions of Full Metal Alchemist. Which I didn't know until recently. Yes. You should subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of this content going forward and ring that bell so you know what's up. And we will catch you in the next one. Bye, guys. We'll